Hey everybody, Durek back at it again with another video on Ready or Not, Car Coast. There isn't anything new about Carcosa at the time of this recording, but I thought that I would go back and look at the comment section because there was a lot of people that pointed out a lot of things that I neglected to talk about in the video itself. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, basically Void Interactive has created an ARG or alternate reality game, which is essentially a story being told outside of the media that's being shown, only seen by those who are willing to take a closer look. I go more in depth in this video right here. You could click it on the icon that's at the top right or look in the description. It should be like the second link down or something like that. But anyways, let's get started. The first comment reads, Hey Durag, at 1915, the HRT FBI agent closes his eyes and the background goes from red to blue. Is this possibly him entering Carcosa and seeing the victims of sex trafficking? So before I really dig into this, I have to mention something. Before he gets to the door and kicks it open, there is a part where he's walking towards the door and on the right hand side there is like this yellow graffiti that's on the wall i completely neglected to mention this in the original video because i didn't think it was going to be relevant but there is a meaning behind the yellow sign and it goes like this in the book the repair of reputations we learned that there are lethal chambers that are in towns and cities with statues depicting the fates these are places where individuals are able to legally euthanize themselves fates in greek mythology are known as the Moy Roy. They are responsible for giving life to all mortals. Fates stood before the door. They would have statues that are in front of these lethal chambers to try and prevent people from killing themselves. Which if we argue, SWAT officers could be there to preserve life. They somewhat fulfill the role of being a fate. The sign of a fate is yellow. The yellow sign in the Ready or Not trailers seem to be stamped all over the kill house, i.e. lethal chambers. And with SWAT officers as fates standing before the door of the kill house or lethal chamber, they are ready to push in and preserve life. And that's basically what we think the yellow sign means. But getting back to his comment, there is a bunch of theories that we have written down and I think this one explains it the most. This is the void theory which basically states that Carcosa is psychological, meaning void is a state of mind. Only those who have experienced severe trauma enter the void. It's all in your head. Which really plays to the idea Carcosa being a dream world where the souls of the dead go to rest. Carcosa isn't a place that you can physically go. You would have to be some sort of entity that isn't physical or a soul. So could this part of the clip be a metaphor for Carcosa? It's possible, but we don't truly know. Before I move on, there's one thing that I want to point out. When the clip turns from red to blue, I think, and this is total speculation, but what if red signifies warmth and blue means cold? The reason I'm saying this is because of what was said in the short story, An Inhabitant of Carcosa which I talked about in the previous video. The link is down in the description or up at the top if you want to look at it. But the line that I am referring to is this one right here. He is aware that it is cold, though he does not feel cold. There is a distinct difference between the guy in the story and the guy that's in the trailer. The guy in the story is dead, while the guy in the trailer is still standing. But it's obvious that he's dreaming, which means that this guy must have experienced some sort of trauma in his line of work. At least that's what I think. I could be wrong. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say when it comes to this comment here. Moving on to the next one. This one says, Hey Durag, not sure if you caught the shield in the FBI trailer with the name Hooverville. It's a town that's made during the Great Depression. I don't know if that's something. Yeah, I caught it, but... I don't know, I look at it and it's just really odd. So those of you that don't know what Hoovervilles are, during the Great Depression, which I believe started back in 1929 or something like that, shanty towns would be built up next to modern cities. Shanty towns were basically like built out of cardboard, wood, tin cans, just anything that people could get their hands on. Because when you didn't have money, then you're kind of out on the streets. And you know, there was a lot of people out on the streets during that time. The reason why they got the names Hooverville or Hoover Town was because a politician from the Democratic National Committee or DNC C, Charles Michelson. He basically used it as a political move to take shots at the president, who at the time his name was Herbert Hoover, which it is believed that he was the one that basically crashed the economy. Now whether that's true, I'm not entirely sure. But everybody caught on to it because the newspapers were basically hammering out the idea that it was Hoover's fault, so the name just kind of stuck. All the shanty towns next to all the actual modern cities at the time got the names Hoovervilles, Hoover Towns. A lot of things were named after Hoover. Most things that were basically bad things that were named 
after Hoover, if I remember correctly. I just find this very odd that the name Hooverville would even be on a riot shield, especially in this day and age and in California. I mean, the only thing that I could like maybe link it to is maybe there was a dust bowl that forced a lot of people to migrate from the middle of the United States because the, the dust bowl took place in the very middle, wiping out a lot of crops. And a bunch of those people moved from the middle states to California. And this is probably why California is the most agriculture state, but I, I just don't see why the shield has Hooverville on it. I mean, maybe it has to do with that, but I don't know. That's an interesting one. I just don't know how it fits into Carcosa. I mean, maybe it does. I've been looking around and it seems like it might have to do with Lovecrafty and stuff. Maybe? I, I don't know. Like I type in Hooverville and Carcosa and it comes up with a bunch of like Cthulhu pictures, which is interesting. And I think there is one the Ballad of Black Tom. It's apparently a book that has a lot of Lovecraft country, whatever that's supposed to be. Apparently this book takes a lot from an inhabitant of Carcosa, so maybe that's where it comes from, so I'm not entirely sure. Like it says right here, for readers of the genre, the book's weirdness is magnified by its color, which calls to mind The King in Yellow, an episode of weird mythology created by Robert Chambers, using elements from Ambrose Bierce, an inhabitant of Carcosa. The Chambers Beers mythos was most likely the model for the Lovecraft mythos, according to this article here. So maybe that's how they're connected? I'm not entirely sure. There could also be a connection with L.A. Noor because in the game there is a shanty town that you have to fight in if I remember correctly. But yeah, that's all I really got to say about this comment here. So uh, we're gonna move on to the next one. 1138 is Bell upside down, but probably not the rabbit hole you wanted. Actually, anything could be a clue at this point. I'm just literally throwing mud at a wall to see what sticks. Fuck it, I'll do it. Let's type it in. Carcosa Bell, enter. What the hell? There's a there's there's a game called Path to Carcosa Bell of Lost Souls. It's a card game. There's a fucking game? Oh no. Oh no. Do you think Ryro and Grunter, you know, they're just like playing this game as we're trying to solve this shit? Like what if what if this is like I know this is like a really bad comparison, but like, you know, Hitler's Mind Kampf. I've never read the book myself, but from what I heard, it basically had all the plans of what Hitler was going to do. What if this game is just like that? Like, it has all the plans of what they're trying to do. Like, everything that we need is in this game. I'm tempted to buy it, but <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I don't know if it won't be worth it, because I'll probably never play it. Well, that was an interesting find. God damn it, what if it's the answers to all of our freaking problems? Nah, I'm too broke to buy it anyway. Well, let's move on to the next one, huh? Hey, did some research on the shield code. It turns out that the LC is a jewelry store in LA that happens to be across from Broadway between 5th and 6th. I'm not sure how this helps, but seems like it leads somewhere. I also asked him for the coordinates. Typing in the coordinates takes us to a Hill Street. It's literally like the next street over from Broadway, which if you don't know what we're talking about, there was an envelope in the trailer that had three letters that brought us to this location, but it was the street over on Broadway between 5th and 6th. It's in the previous video, so just go watch that one. It'll make sense to you. So it looks like it basically points to a really big building international diamond center which i'm guessing is just a really big freaking jewelry store that incorporates like a bunch of i think it's like a one of those mini malls that has like a bunch of stores at the very bottom and maybe this is like a hotel at the top here maybe i don't know but i'm seeing like a bunch of businesses here so that's probably what it is yeah they're all like on the same building international jewelry center bank of america huh interesting i thought that it actually looked like a bank of america but just seeing the freaking thing the logo right there is just like oh it is a Bank of America. All right. Yeah, and that's basically it. I don't know. I don't know if this. I don't. I honestly don't know if this is anything significant. But it's cool that he actually figured that out. I just wish he would have wrote down how we got to those coordinates. I'm not even sure what kind of code that was on the uh, shield there. It would have been nice to know how he actually got to that position. But yeah, that was interesting. Let's move on to the next one here, which is actually the last comment, but I think it's the most interesting out of all of them. The comment says, "Also, there's a book." LA Rex that mentions a character Carcosa and in the book they do mention a code code 2 high incident 1138 coincidences I mean the whole book is about police work after all hmm interesting let's have a look see at this LA Rex Carcosa oh my god 
Holy shit, look at all of that. Apparently Carcosa is a character in the book itself. Although what he is and what he does, I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna guess that he's a bad guy, but there's no real way to tell unless I read the entire book and I just don't feel like doing that right now. But what I will read is a summary or I think synopsis, one of those two. LA Rex is a gritty and ferocious novel written by Will Beal, an LAPD officer who continues to patrol the streets he writes about. LA Rex is a story of Ben Harlan. Holleran, a seemingly fresh-faced rookie assigned to the 77th Division, LA's most violent precinct. According to this, the main character is still reeling from the Rodney King riots and is partnered with an old-school cop, Miguel Marquez. I think that's how you say that. The two plunge fast and deep into the city's gang wars, and it soon becomes clear that they won't be able to emerge again. Ben is going to face the demons that he's been running from and take care of them once and for all. The book itself is bristling with energy and authenticity of the author's experience as a working policeman in South Central LA. It's been said that the book is a literary thriller that doesn't just unfold, it explodes. How interesting. You know, I could kind of see some parallels or mirroring of the campaign and this because it says that Ben is a new fresh faced rookie and from what I hear I think it was the developer podcast they had said that the main character in the campaign was recently transferred to the department that's featured in ready or not so I'm wondering if this actually is one of the stories that was ta uh, you know looked at very possible not entirely sure though so that was an interesting dive back into Carcosa what did you guys think is any of the stuff that I told you relevant I mean there's no sure way to tell for all I know everything that I just said could be irrelevant but yeah i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye